So six years ago, I landed my first job straight from the university. And it was baptism by fire. You know how what you study in school versus what you get on the ground? It's never really one and the same thing. My stress and anxiety were off the roof. It was so bad that I actually developed a terrible stress acne, which was a constant reminder of all the stress that I was feeling. To cope with this, I would take a break away from the office environment, and during my lunch hour, I would take a 30 minute walk in the neighborhood. It was full of trees and greenery. And I noticed my walks always made me feel so calm and relaxed. And my afternoons were more stress free. This continued to be such a common occurrence that, as any learner would do, I turned to the largest source of information of our age, Google. And I asked, does taking a walk reduce your fear of work? And why is that? <laughs> this led me to discovering our topic for today. Now, with a show of hands, how many of us enjoy sleeping while it's raining? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. How many of us are relaxed while seated next to a bonfire and ready to open up? Okay, alright, amazing. How many of us enjoy taking a walk under a canopy of trees, especially in a city? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And lastly, um, how many of us enjoy dipping their feet in a shallow stream of water and playing with the rocks or the you guys, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so from where I'm standing, all of you, some of them raising their hands. All of you <laughs> raise their hands. And the reason for this lies in bacteria. So bacteria is our innate love for nature, a term that was introduced by the German ecologist Eric Fromm, and later developed by the scientist Edward Wilson. Wilson explained that our love for nature came about because of our ancestors evolving largely in the natural world compared to our current industrial world. Our ancestors relied on nature for food, for shelter, for clothing, for medicine, for survival. And this connection with the natural world became so ingrained in our DNA that it still forms part of our preferences, attitudes, behaviors, and emotions in regards to nature. Stephen Kellett, a professor in social ecology, expanded on biophilia, coming up with biophilic design. Biophilic design is the integration of biophilia, our love for nature, into our buildings and our built environments. He came up with elements and attributes of biophilic design, and he also showcased research that had been done to show the importance of biophilia in our health and well-being. For example, improved recovery rates for patients in hospitals with major setups, early childhood motivation rates, reduce crime in neighborhoods and an abundance of nature, just to mention a few. But what we want here is on a mission to reawaken this connection that our ancestors had with the natural world. A connection and a relationship of harmony with nature and sustainability. Researching on both biophilia, biophilic design, and traditional African architecture, I realized my ancestors lived biophilically. They just didn't have the word biophilia back then. And they implemented the six elements of biophilic design as we derived them from the same Kellett. They incorporated environmental features in their architecture, and they use of mud, grass, patch, bamboo, whatever they had within their local environment. Fractals are process we see in nature, in the branching of trees, in the formation of leaves, where we have repeating patterns in various scales. As you can see in the architecture, uh, this is a drawing explaining what is going on above and what's not here. We have the pattern repeating in different ratios. This is, these are hearts. 
They incorporated light and space through the use of courtyards and verandas that brought in light and reduced the distinction between the indoors and the outdoors, creating a seamless connection with nature. They incorporated evolved human nature relationships, where architecture was not just about the structure, but also the spiritual relationship they had with nature. So you find sacred elements and sacred spaces within their buildings. And lastly, they had they incorporated place-based relationships where they didn't just build the architecture anywhere, but was in regards to water sources, to food sources, to communal activities, and ensuring that there was harmony with the local topography. Now, fast forward to our current modern world, where we pay little to zero attention to the locality line. In fact, our built environment has become a huge contributor to climate change. I hear it's no longer called climate change anymore, but it's called community. There's a huge reliance on natural reserves for construction. Um, there's a huge reliance on non-renewable sources of energy for heating, for cooling, leading to an increase in greenhouse gases uh, being emitted. There's a loss of great spaces in our cities, leading to a lack of connection with nature for city dwellers, a lack of biodiversity, increased temperatures in our cities, and the examples are endless. So, how can Kisumu City incorporate by this design? One, we can create more green spaces and parks within our cities. We can bring in water features like ponds and rain gardens within the city to cool the city, to make the city feel calm and relaxed. We can incorporate vertical gardens and urban forestry within the city, which will also make the air more better, help us to cool the city, increase the biodiversity. We can also um, incorporate biophilic design in our urban planning, in our new constructions, in our renovations, and give incentives to developers who are incorporating biophilic design into their <coughs> plans. Now, we all know money makes the world go round. Well, I love money, I don't know about you. <laughs> but biophilic design does not just incorporate um, bringing a health and well being or help us mitigate climate change. Biophilic design also brings us financial gain. For example, it raises our property values because of the aesthetic appeal. Um, just need to look at Singapore to actually understand this. Look at the real estate market there and look at Singapore and its biophilic design attributes. It enhances our health and well being. So, for people like our employees in our companies, employees who are satisfied, who are healthy, are able to generate more profits for our country, for our city. It also enhances and reduces energy consumption in our buildings, which is really important, due to the reduced lighting, uh, because we're using natural light, natural ventilation, so it helps us save costs in regards to our buildings and operating them. Our ancestors taught us well in regards to living in harmony with the natural world, taking only what is required and in wastage. It's high time we took a step back and actually studied their relationship with the natural world and the sustainable practices they incorporate in the architecture. Green movements are doing a commendable job in creating low environmental impact buildings, but this is insufficient in creating long term sustainability because people are not compelled to take care of spaces, they don't feel connected. And this is where Balfilia comes in. Now, being the millennial that I am, I went back to Google and I asked Google, Google, using artificial intelligence, can you create for me a Kisumu city that uses its natural resources? For example, the water has the reeds along the lake. You know, with enough research and experimentation, we could make amazing building materials out of that. And this is what Google gave me. 
Now, imagine working there or imagine living there and compare that to our concrete structure in our city. Now, imagine uh, working over here and dipping your bricks, you know, playing with the water, not the sewage from the city. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. It's own city. Let's work together in creating a city that is about really caring. A city that our future generations will be proud to take care of for generations and generations to come. So follow me on LinkedIn where I explore more on this science in a simple language that is easy for you to understand and to implement. Thank you.